the orange number eight car of Doug Wolfgang was wheeled away from his pit. The good news is they found the overheating and the hot foot problem. It was traced to a small oil leak that was easily fixed. That car is fit and ready to go. It will start toward the back. In fact, the next to the last row on the inside will be Wolfgang. Up front, the Rock is where we can expect the action here at the A main. That's really where uh, most of it should be. It's a Sprint Car Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, the deck is stacked for the Kinzer family. Steve, the winningest Sprint Car driver of them all in modern times, his cousin Mark Kinzer on the front row. Stevie Smith from Pennsylvania. Bobby Allen, another Pennsylvania in the second row. Bobby Davis Jr. and Sammy Swindell, two of the Memphis gang in the third row. Joe Garrity and Danny Lasowski, two fine young drivers. Lasowski, track champion here in the next row. Ronnie Daniel, Candy Hellenberg in the fifth row. Tommy Estes Jr., Chris Eaton from Maryland. It goes on and on and on. Dave Blaney in the seventh seat. Never count him out, a hard driver. Row eight, Donnie Kreutz Jr. from Sinking Springs, Pennsylvania. Danny Smith from Indiana. Ricky Hood, Mike Peters in the, the ninth row. Randy Smith, an excellent driver. Shane Carson, back in the $12 sign from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And row 11, Doug Wolfgang. Remember him, Steve Evans. Oh, who can forget the Wolf after a night like this? The young fans at home looking for a driver to root for. How about Stevie Smith Jr. in that 77 car? They are underway. The biggest race of the year in sprint car racing is happening. 30 laps on the half mile in Knoxville. A ton of money and a ton of prestige up for grabs. Steve Kinzer has problems. Mark Kinzer leads, but Steve suddenly fell back, almost like the car jumped out of gear like there was no power to the rear wheel. And look at the wolf coming up through the back. On the outside, giving it everything he's got. He is right now closing on one X, Ronnie Daniel for the 11th spot. What about Steve Kinzer? That's what everybody is wondering. He was on the pole. He has had a perfect week of racing here, and suddenly on the opening lap, he falls back. He's sitting in ninth place now. That is the 10th car of Bobby Davis Jr., but the 11, that famous white 11 of Steve Kinzer, struggling at the moment. There he is work his way back through the field. A dramatic change of events here that has altered their entire complexion of this race. Just incredible. The Kinzer fans, the Kinzer family are just stunned by this. All right, for the eighth position, we're looking at one X. Ronnie Daniels, 17 E, Chris Ash, and 11 Steve Kinzer. A massive struggle for that spot. Right behind them is Hillenberg, then Jerry Gray. And bringing up the rear is Doug Wolfgang. In fact, he's moving in on Steve Kinzer in the white 11. Only one car, the green number three of Terry Gray is between them. There is Kinzer, there is Gray, and the Wolf on the outside riding high, trying to get around both of them. But Steve Kinzer mounting a bit of a comeback of his own as he's challenging Timothy D. Chris each and seven, Andy Hillenberg, and he is going to repass them. Well, suddenly Steve Kinzer seems to be back in form after some really shocking uh, developments here and uh, now is on the move again but uh, he's got a long long way to make up and he's also got a cousin up front who's uh, upholding the family tradition leading this thing is Mark. so for 10th place we got a real wrestling match between chris east terry gray wolfgang donnie Craig jr has moved in there as has andy Hellenberg. all five of those automobiles packed together in a struggle for that position and Ronnie Daniels, the one extra, has lost that eight spot to the number 11 car of Steve Kinzer, trying to play comeback. And here back in 10 is number three, Terry Ken Gray. There's the one with the orange number eight, followed by 17 E. Chris E. Okay, back to Steve Kinzer, the 11 automobile, down low, moving in on the 56, the white 56 of Danny Smith, in a battle for the seventh spot. Kinzer, relentless now. There is none better than Wolfgang and Kinzer when they are in the back of the field, both trying to move ahead. Both of them have the pit in their teeth. All right, and here is for the seventh spot. Kinzer's got seventh spot, and he took it away from Danny Smith in the number 56 car. Now, back up front here, your leader 5M, the blue and white car of Mark Kinzer. Behind him in the second spot, 1A scrubby Bobby Allen. He has lapped Tommy Estes Jr. He has lapped 29M Mike Peters. And he is trying to lap $12 sign Shane Garson. That's your leader, Mark Tenser. Well, virtually everybody in this place expected that this would be a duel between Mark and Steve Tenser in, uh, in this stage of the race. But of course, his cousin is way back, surprisingly enough, and is uh, very much 
an underdog to repeat here in Knoxville. But there is a man who still charges, still hoping for win number six. That is Doug Wolfgang riding high off turn number four down the front straightaway. He is closing in on Steve Kinzer. There's your leader, Mark Kinzer in the five, the blue and white number five through turn number three. And here's your race for second. Bobby Allen in the 1A and the black number one of Sammy Swindell. You know, we get a report. In fact, that we didn't see it smoke out of Swindell's motor. And we understand that Steve Kinzer will be pitting. Let's see if that's true if the 11th car comes in. Smoke out of Swindell. Kinzer possibly pitting. There is incredible action here in this 30 lap A main of the Knoxville Land. Clearly, you can see the smoke on the straightaway out of Swindell's car. It doesn't seem to smoke in the turn. We're watching Sammy Swindell. We can tell you Steve Kinzer is in the pits. Engine shut off and out of the car. So Sammy Swindell continues to ride the high side. Well, Bobby Allen in the 1A sits down low. He loves that low drill. Bobby Allen seldom goes up high. It works for him all the time. Whereas Sammy, well, he'll try anything. He'll ride up on top of the fence if he has to to get around somebody. But right now, Bobby Allen is holding him off at the smoke. Continues to percolate out of the right side of that engine in Sammy Swindell's automobile. Whether it's a breather, a loose oil line, whatever it is, it doesn't seem to bother him down the straight, Steve, in certain parts of the racetrack. And then all of a sudden, we'll get a big puff of smoke, especially as he seems to go down the front straight away. That's right, but uh, how long before, with a leak like that, you consume the oil, the oil pressure goes to zero, and you blow the motor up. All right, here is Doug Wook, and he is now in the eighth position. Wook running eighth. Boy, that is incredible. He said earlier, I'll take what I can get in the eight made if I win the bait. Well, he's getting a lot more than I think uh, he thought he would. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, all he needs now is a caution, and uh, who's to know what would happen, because that'll smack him right up with the leader. But uh, right now, the Wolf has a relatively clear racetrack, and he is on the move. And let's give some credit to Deuce Terrell and the boys who worked for him in that number eight car to just within minutes get it back out as competitive as it was the race before. An incredible job by the entire team. Now. But a puff of smoke now coming out of the eighth car. So uh, remember he told Gary that it was getting hot in that automobile, that they were worried about temperature, and uh, it could be that that oil leak is starting to come back again. That's right. That may well be a recurring problem. Well, and the yellow is out. Dave Blaney is slowing on the front straight right under the starter stand, the 7C car. You said all Wolf Kenny needs is a caution. Well, you bought him one, yeah. Brother Dave Blaney did. <laughs> well, Dave didn't mean to, I'll guarantee you that, because he started uh, 14th, had high hopes, got a very good race car, and had a good week here in Knoxville, but uh, it appears to be over for him at this point. There is your leader, Mark Kinzer. Coasting along. A little smoke from Mark as well. Wow, we. You know, you very seldom see these race cars uh, come apart like this, but now we've got three smokers out here. And there's Gary chasing down Steve Kinzer. Well, Steve, it's been great for so many years in Knoxville, but not this time. What happened? Because it looked like you were just going backward from the green. Well, I took off and the mag went bad or something the first lap, and the more gas you try to give it, it wouldn't go. And it just, something happened on a, right on the very start. It, I think a car was working perfect. I don't think it would have been any race to it, but no matter. It's over with. We didn't make it. You think Mark has got enough muscle that he can hang on and win this thing now? No, I don't know. I, I haven't had a chance to really watch. Thanks, Steve. Huh? Well, if Steve Kinzer had a chance to watch, he'd be concerned about his cousin because smoke started coming out of that engine, and it's still coming out of it. As soon as the yellow was displayed, there is Mark Kinzer. He will be the leader when, again, we go to green. That there is something indeed wrong with that car. In fact, as Brock said, we've got, oh my goodness, he is stopping that car. That young man is furious. It is obvious by his actions that that car is done for the night. He had the world's most important sprint car race within his grasp, and it has escaped him. Mark Kenzer is out. Bobby Allen will be our new leader when we come back to the Knoxville Nationals. Incredible. Who could have possibly predicted at the start of this race that both the front row starters, both members of the famed Kinzer family, would fall out due to engine failure? The second casualty, Mark Kinzer, after a brilliant drive. 
had the race in hand, and suddenly, under caution, the car stalled on the straightaway, and he is out of the race. And now, another potential casualty, Steve Evans, the second-place car, Sammy Swindells, is also smoking. Absolutely. He is just behind Bobby Allen. Is that smoke zapping any horsepower? It didn't appear to be so. It's just a leak of some kind, and Sammy's going to have to deal with it as the green is out. Bobby Allen, Sammy Swindell running one and two. Stevie Smith in the red 77 behind them. Nine laps to go. Okay, the 1A, Scruffy, Bobby Allen, the original outlaw, down low in his customary tight line around this half mile. And Sammy Swindell, also the customary rim rider, up on top, up against the marbles, on the cushion, trying the long way around. So it's two opposing styles of driving here, and right now it's Bobby Allen that seems to have the advantage. With over $35,000 to the winner, Sammy Swindell will risk a scorched motor if it'll just hang on long enough to get around Bobby Bobby Allen. Swindell not making up any real money. He certainly isn't. Bobby Allen was uh, coming down to finish the seventh lap. He is holding on to a strong lead. So it's Bobby Allen in the the smoking Sammy Swindell must go down into the pit where Gary Gerald has chased down yet another tip. Mark, I know you've never had a better opportunity to win the biggest race of your career. What ended your night? Uh, I believe we blew a motor uh, just there about two laps before that last yellow uh, started to vibrate. I thought, dear God, don't let there be a yellow. I didn't know how many laps were left, but we might have been able to struggle about a third place finish, but on a yellow, when you uh, snap back on the gas on a motor like this, uh, it's real hard on him, and it, uh, on the back stretch, it just split on him. Disappointing night. Thank you for talking with us. Thank you. Steve? And it's the highest quality equipment in sprint car racing that is letting the drivers down tonight. There, the quiet car of Mark Kenton. Nothing quiet about Bobby Allen and Sammy Swindell. They are still at it. Swindell has taken the lead. Oil, smoke, and occasionally fire. The black car still drives away from Bobby Allen. Seeking his second Nashville National victory. There's suddenly a charge to the front by a smoking uh, black number one driven by Sammy Swindell. And now Two and a quarter right now, Rock. Bobby Allen starting about a charge. Look at Bobby Allen going down low. Swindell way, way up high. Terrific automobile race. Neck and neck. Allen a wink ahead as it comes down the back straight away. Sandy Swindell brushes the fence. Down into turn number three. Swindell on the throttle all the way. Scrappy hangs down low. The white flag is out. Bobby Allen. you after the yellow did you think he'd get him back right away i thought i had a chance but i missed i missed the bottom on that start and i knew he got me because of that and i seen him having trouble when he moved up out of my groove i thought i had a chance again because i felt like if i took a lap or two i got my tires hot again i could run the bottom i don't care I won. <laughs> all right it beautiful. was those weld heads that did it <laughs> fantastic congratulations scruffy wins it a sensational victory steve 